Welcome to Oklahoma State University. Situated in a small town in the heartland of the United States, OSU is a symbol of higher education to the masses. But how did this university and its home, Stillwater, get its start? Stillwater was founded as a result of the first land run, which was April 22nd, 1889. And uh, some of that all came about as a result of uh, the boomers who were coming into this area of land. Uh, it was unassigned to any Native American tribes, and so they believed it was public lands, and therefore they could, they could settle on it under the Homestead Act of 1862. However, they were not supposed to be here, and the U.S. government would run them out on a regular basis. Um, the early settlers were very smart, and they understood that they needed something to help sustain and, and sustain Stillwater's uh, vitality and, and continue to help it grow. And they looked at two options, either a state penitentiary or a land-grant college. They decided on the land-grant college. Thank goodness. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was between several different communities in Payne County that, that were trying to uh, vie for the college. Uh, it came down to Stillwater and Perkins. Stillwater received the grant for the university and immediately started holding classes in a local church. Bonds were sold to finance the first building for the university, now called Old Central. The students at the time were so eager to have the building that they would help carry bricks in between their classes. That building was dedicated in June of 1894, with classes beginning later that September. This year marks Old Central's 120th birthday. Uh, at that time, the only universities were private, and the only people that went to the universities were the privileged. Uh, Lincoln thought everybody ought to be able to go to the university. It'd be good for them, of course, but it'd also be good for the country. The federal government had a lot of land uh, around, the, uh, around our country, and so uh, the deal was that it would give land to a state in return for the state agreeing to uh, build a university which would focus at the time on the two major economic uh, areas, agriculture and mechanical. Originally known as Oklahoma Territorial Agriculture and Mechanical College, Territorial was dropped upon the inauguration of the state. In 1957, the name changed to Oklahoma State University, reflecting the expansion of the curriculum. The college held its first commencement with just six male graduates. It started out as a very, very small, with very small student body and very small faculty. Uh, over the years, it has grown, and particularly so in the last few years. OSU now has four campuses, with more than 36,551 students, representing more than 100 countries, and continues to grow. But there's still lots to come. Uh, we're going to build a new business building and uh, we'll build a major addition to the human sciences building. We're building a structures lab. Uh, and did I mention Bo Boone Pickens Stadium? We opened that while I've been here. President Hargis has had successful careers in law, banking, and television, but saw the university's open presidency as an opportunity to give back. He graduated from OSU in 1968 and took office as the president four decades later. I grew up uh, moving about 20 times, and uh, when I came to OSU finally, it, it was really the first community I was really a part of for any length of time, and, and I was here for, of course, four years. The community that President Hargis experienced has been a part of OSU since its beginning, and continues to exist today. Although education is the main objective, the university strives for many other goals. We don't just focus on the academics, which is very important, but we focus on service to the community because that really land-grant universities uh, have that mission to serve, to serve our state, the nation, and the world. And we do that through instructing students, we do it through research, and we share both with our state, nation, and the world. That's, that's what makes us very special, I think, at all land-grant universities, really. The other thing I love about OSU is uh, people always talk about how friendly it is. I think, the, I think the real explanation for that may be, even though the majority of our students come from metropolitan areas, uh, somehow that, that rural kind of uh, uh, ethos of how you treat each other is, uh, is, it permeates this entire campus and people just, uh, I think, uh, are very welcoming and it's a uh, very supportive campus and I think that makes it special. I wish I could bottle it and uh, 
and I could recruit even more students here. Building development, educational opportunity, and even sports success can sway the decision for students to attend universities. But the atmosphere is the most important factor for many potential students. You know, everybody tells you where to go to school. Your parents have their idea, your teachers have that idea, have an idea, your friends, of course. But, and the truth is, you can get a good education in a lot of places. Uh, and you can get a very good, a great education here at OSU. But, but I tell them, all these people tell you what to do, but you're the one doing it. You're the one that's going. And you've got to go and visit and meet the faculty, meet the students, uh, meet the staff. Walk around the campus. Does it feel like home to you? You'll know right here where you ought to go. And I don't say that just to be fair and magnanimous. I say it because I know there's something special on this campus. It touches people. And if they get here, uh, they'll usually, we'll usually get them. And, uh, and that's, I think, a, a testament, frankly, to not only the beautiful campus, but to the people. Attracting people to a university seems to be a tough task, but at OSU, the school's strongest draw is its community. What really makes OSU are our people, and it's uh, all of the constituents here on campus. That's our, and it starts with our students, uh, our faculty, our staff. Uh, none can live and succeed without the other. Students need the faculty, the faculty need the staff uh, to provide the resources so they can teach the students. So uh, you take the people out of here and this is just a lot of buildings.